<laughs> However, an Illinois representative is hoping to bring both sides of the aisle together on an issue facing millions of Americans. Joining us now is Illinois representative Eric Sorensen. Good morning, Eric, and thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good to be with you, Jenna and Dustin. Now, you introduced a bipartisan bill looking to crack down on robocalls. Eric, first off, tell us why this is such a, pri a top priority for you. Well, this is something that I hear from our neighbors in our district. In fact, yesterday, I was talking with a constituent, Cassandra, and she was telling me, she said, uh, she said, Congressman, we start getting robocalls at 8 in the morning, and it doesn't end until 8 p.m. And, and the most important thing that she told me was she said, Eric, we are retired. We want to be able to sleep in sometimes, and we deserve that. And the problem here is people are getting duped um, by billions of dollars in this country, uh, by people that are, that are using these things, just calling us up out of the blue. And the problem that we have today is now we've got some artificial intelligence that's being used. Uh, where the caller can be perceived to be someone in your own family. And so for a parent or a grandparent, it's easier to, to fall into that trap. And so it's Congress's time to act on this, to make sure we put more restrictions on it, and we put more penalties on the people that want to uh, dupe, especially seniors. Yeah, Eric, I think all of us can say we get pretty annoyed with all the robocalls right. that we get all day. So, Eric, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the Quiet Act and how it will aim to reduce the number of spam and robocalls that we all receive every day. Well, uh, the bill requires robocallers who are using artificial intelligence uh, to say that up front. Um, it also means that we are increasing the penalties uh, for those people that are uh, doing these robocalls. For instance, in New Hampshire, it's being investigated by the state's attorney general there uh, because there was a robocall that went out to a lot of likely voters, and it was the voice of the president of the United States, even though it was artificially generated in the state of Texas. And so we need to make sure that when people open up their phone when they slide and answer the call that they know they're talking to a real person and if they're not it has to be disclosed that way now eric uh, looking at the issue from a broader perspective uh, some of these scammers are getting more and more advanced what can lawmakers and even law enforcement do to stay a step ahead of these criminals well, right. I mean, th this is a real situation. Um, also, this week, I sat down with the Stevenson County Sheriff's Department uh, in my office in Washington, D.C., and we talked about this. This is a real issue that's affecting people in our hometowns. And so it is Congress's place to act here because there are already laws on the books, but they're very, very lenient. And those scammers out there, they're finding ways to circumvent the law. What we as legislators need to do is make sure that, that those guardrails are in place to protect our consumers from those who want to do us harm.